Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything. Arizona Coyotes, uh, not much news still, you know, just like where the team's located. It's a desert of information, not really much news on the head coaching front. The New Jersey tees that, you know, the Coyotes sent to all the season ticket holders still hasn't been revealed. Uh, no roster changes, no trades, no signings. Um, that's about it in terms of other things going on in the NHL. Uh, last video, I talked smack about Montreal and uh, Gerard Gallant and the world hockey team, the world, the Canadian World Cup hockey team. Uh, Montreal's in the final four. So obviously don't take what I say for you know much and uh, the Canadians won the gold medal so congratulations to Darcy Kemper, Michael Bunting, Aiden Hill and of course Shane Doan who was the assistant general manager for that team. Gerard Gallant and the Canadians they were down bad early in the tournament I believe they lost their first three games but you know continued along grabbed some wins Kemper got comfortable and the team won gold so congrats Congratulations to them. Today, the Norris finalist for the best defenseman in the NHL was released, and the finalists are obviously not Jacob Jacob, Adam Fox, Victor Hedman, and Kale McCarr, all designated by the first letter of their last name here. Uh, I thought Chikrin probably should have deserved a nomination, and this is the reason why all these Beautiful stats on the board will show how Chikrin may have been snubbed and, you know, which defenseman could have been left off the nominees list. So let's just jump right into it. Let's just look at total points. Let's just look at the stats. Uh, Chikrin led all of them with 18 goals. The next defenseman with the most goals was Victor Hedman with nine. Um, Chikrin, obviously, the least amount of points among the four defensemen. Uh, with 41 points and if you look at total points Adam Fox wins out with 47 points in 55 games but in terms of a point per game basis Kale McCarr wins with 44 points in 44 games played he missed a couple games due to injury Kale McCarr did which may have skewed a bit of his stats uh, he missed 12 games and only playing 44 games to be nominated a bit of a head scratcher, but I'm a huge Kale McCarr fan. I had him in my pool. Uh, he's one of the best young defensemen in the game. But did he deserve the Norris nomination this season? Uh, we'll just go ahead and see. So we'll start with the first five stats that I gathered. I gathered about 10 different stats, some analytical, you know, some in favor of Chikrin, some not in favor of Jacob Chikrin. So the first stat is even strength goals and Chikrin blew it out of the water with 13 even strength goals in 56 games. Just an unbelievable stat. And you look at Adam Fox with two and Kale McCarr with only four even strength goals. Victor Hedman, you know, pretty good with eight goals there, but Chikrin blew that one out of the water. Even strength points, Chikrin again with 27. The other guys, you know, 22 for Fox, 22 for McCarr, and 21 for Hedman. Now, power play points. This is where the reason why Chikrin probably wasn't nominated, but we'll discuss why he should have been either way. Power play points, Chikrin with 14, Hedman with 24, Fox 23, McCarr 22. So they're all kind of the same type of defenseman here. We look at even strength. Um, Hedman, Fox, and McCarr, the nominees, not very good in terms of even strength, or they're okay compared to Jacob Chikrin. But on the power play, look at their points. I mean, and look at the teams they play for. Victor Hedman plays for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Obviously, he's going to get power play points on that team. Kale McCarr, you know, the Avalanche finished number two in the league, I believe, or actually they finished first. They got the President's Trophy. The Avalanche, I had them to pick the cup. Uh, they're a bit of a rut right now, down 3-2 to Vegas, but just an unbelievable team in the regular season. One of, one of the most lethal, dangerous teams I've ever seen in a really long time. Uh, Adam Fox, the New York Rangers, I mean, they're an offensive dynamo. 
They're kind of weak on the back end in terms of defensive structure. They're looking at hiring Rick Tockett as a coach, so maybe they'll fix that in the offseason. But when you have, you know, Artemi Panarin, Mika Zabinijad, Paul Buchnevich, you got two really young guys in Lafreniere and Capo Caco, uh, a very high end, high offensive team the Rangers are. So if you're on that power play unit, you're going to pick up points sooner or later. Uh, Jake Green, you know, power, the Coyotes have a terrible power play. I was harping on it all season. And it goes to show the Coyotes don't have that offensive talent for sure compared to those three teams. So it's a bit unfair how Jake Green was kind of snubbed for not really producing on the power play when he's not working with much compared to the other nominees. So we'll go. We'll keep on five on five, and I like the five on five stat because it's equal ground for everyone. I'm sure Tampa, the Rangers, and Colorado are better five on five teams than the Coyotes, but uh, the other team has five players on the ice as well. It's the most even ground. You could make comparisons between players, and if I see Trickrin, Chickrin is just a hundred percent without a doubt, no arg- argument, no contention. Contention, contention uh, that he is the better five on five player out of the nominees. So look at time on ice five on five. Chikrin leads the way with uh, just over 19 and a half minutes per game five on five. Adam Fox plays just over 18 minutes a game five on five. Uh, McCarr just over 19 minutes. Same with Hedman. So I mean, it is a small discrepancy among the players but again Chikrin leads away five on five when teams have equal number of players on the ice when it's the most of the hockey game is played five on five so if your player is on it for most of five on five he's on for most of the game um in terms of just pure time on ice uh the nominees beat out Chikrin but they're on the power play way more than Chikrin Chikrin, this was the first season of him being on the first power play unit. Uh, Rick Tockett still liked to play Ekman Larson on one unit, Chikrin on the other, and it was kind of even between both of them, but Hedman, McCarr, and Fox, they're on their power play units way longer, and their first power play unit is more lethal uh, than their second power play unit, so, so they're on the power play for about a minute 10, minute 20, compared to the Coyotes where it's a split like minute for each unit because both are terrible. Um, possession numbers, I don't know if you can see this, but this was the category where McCarr blows everyone out of the water. McCarr is probably the best possession defenseman in the league, 61%. So that means when McCarr is on the ice, he's holding the puck 61% of the time. Uh, the opposition is only holding the puck 39% of the time. When he's on the ice, Chikrin uh, and Fox were a bit low at 49 and a half. And at least Hedman is above 50%. He's at 53.1%. But if we look at the quality of the possession, just because you hold the puck, you know, what does that really mean? Um, well, in Makar's case, it means a lot. Um, so possession quality is calculated based on expected goals for and the difference between expected goals for and expected goals against. So you got some negatives up here. Chikrin's a negative 8.9. So that means when he's on the ice uh, and he has possession, the team, the opposing team is going to score way more uh, when Chikrin's on the ice. Same with Victor Hedman. I mean, Hedman and Chikrin probably, well, they are on the first pairing and they face deep competition. So that's why they're in the negatives there. Adam Fox is a positive at 7.3 and Kale McCarr 13.4. So when McCarr is on the ice, he's holding the puck a lot more and the Avalanche have a you know huge, huge advantage in terms of their expected goal scoring when he has a puck and he's on the ice. So I give full credit to McCarr. I firmly believe he's the best possession, best analytical defenseman just in terms of possession, possession and offensively, offensive possession. In terms of goals created, uh, Chikrin has created 24 goals for the Coyotes. Uh, the other players are around there, you know, 22 for Hedman, Fox 22, McCarr 21. Goals created just means um, it's adjusted for an 82-game season. 
So all this means is the Coyotes, when they score, how, how much of that was created just only by Jacob Chikrin. And so in a whole season, 24 goals scored by the Coyotes – uh, were created by Jacob Chikrin. So Ch- Jacob Chikrin wasn't there, wasn't on the team. That's 24 goals the Coyotes would be mi- missing in total. So he leads away out of the nominees there as well. Um, point shares, you know, how many team points did this defenseman create for their team? And team points, I mean, when you win, you get two points. So points like that, not like points as in an assist and a goal. Um, they're all around the same. Fox led that Cordy category with 7.8 points he created for the Rangers. Chikrin's there, 7.4. Then the other two nominees, 7.3. So there's some categories where all the nominees and Chikrin are kind of in the same boat. But obviously, Chikrin's a better even strength defenseman. Makar's a better possession defenseman. Um... And uh, Chikrin is the worst power play defenseman. So, you know, there's certain categories that tell a lot. Uh, Total goals against uh, Chikrin almost was at the most with 63 goals against. Hedman was on the ice for a total of 64 goals against for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Fox and McCarr were close. Fox was on the ice for a total of 50 goals and McCarr uh, with the least at 48 now, when you look at that, you're like, oh, McCarr's a better defenseman. They're not scoring when McCarr's on the ice. And also, when McCarr's on the ice, they have the puck more. And when McCarr's on the ice, they're scoring. The, the possession has some quality to it. They're actually scoring. They're getting high danger scoring opportunities. So maybe McCarr should, you know, get the Norris. But then you look at where are they positioned that these defensemen are when the pucks dropped you know at a face off where are they positioned on the ice and uh mccarr has 63 percent percent of his face offs in the offensive zone and only 36.9 percent of his face offs in the defensive zone so that's like forward that's like a top three forward number that's like austin matthews clayton keller or like jack eichel like nathan mckinnon the that's not a defenseman in my mind. Um, if, you, if, if you don't trust your defenseman, you're making them take 37% of the defensive zone faceoffs. That means the Avalanche have way better defensemen um, on their roster, like Devon Taves, maybe Samuel Gerrard, or Graves, or you know Nemeth, someone like that. Um, so they're not really trusting in the car in, the, in their own defensive zone. So that tells a lot to me. Uh, the person who led this category was Adam Fox, where he was pretty even. 49.5 in the offensive zone and 50.5 in the defensive zone. So the Rangers were comfortable playing them no matter where the faceoff was, defensive or offensive. Chikrin was leaning more towards the offensive side, 56.9, so about 57% of his faceoffs were in the offensive end and 43% in the defensive end. Uh, still lower than Hedman's. Victor Hedman was about 60% offensive zone and 40% defensive zone. So at least Chikrin's second place in terms of their his coach trusting him to take defensive faceoffs and actually being a defenseman. And I think that's what this all boils down to is what really is a criteria for the Norris Trophy. Is it best defenseman? Is it best player who keeps a puck out? Is it best defenseman who could also score? So that's kind of the you know murky waters, a gray area with this award. And pretty much the only player's award that has this controversy around it because it's not really an award for the best offensive defenseman. It's just the best well-rounded defenseman. And honestly, I think Chikrin deserves to be a nominee. Who would I take out for Chikrin? I mean, Victor Hedman, this is his fifth straight year of being nominated for the Best Defenseman Trophy. He won it in 2018. I think we could move on from Victor Hedman. The Tampa Bay Lightning are an incredible hockey team. Um, He doesn't need to be nominated every single year. And I like the transition the NHL is taking with the, the young movement. Adam Fox, Kale McCarr, they're young, really young defensemen. They're only in their second NHL season 
Um, even Chikrin, if it was Chikrin, Fox, and Makar, that would be just a great stat, a great um, PR move for the NHL. It's like, look, our best defensemen are under 25 years old. I mean, Chikrin's, what, 22, 23 years old? It's just that youth movement the NHL needs, new faces. Um, we look at all the defensemen that were at their peak and have just trailed off and um, fell off a cliff, like Drew Doughty, Mark Giordano, Eric Carlson, Brent Burns. Uh, sooner or later, Victor Hedman's going to be one of them. I just felt it would have been a nice story to get Chickering, Fox, and McCarr as a finalist. A lot of unknown guys in the mainstream NHL. Maybe McCarr is the most popular one out of the three, uh, just because of his... Uh, he won, I believe he won Rookie of the Year last year. So Makar has some some specialness to him. It's, it's more of a household name in the NHL. He does a lot of interviews for the NHL. Fox and Chickering are a bit of unknowns, but obviously now with the nomination, Adam Fox is going to be you know no, a, a known name around the NHL. So let me know what you guys think. I think Chickering was snubbed. I believe he deserves to be on here. Kale McCarr is the best offensive defenseman. He's not a well-rounded defenseman. He's, he's not, you know, looks to to play the defensive zone. Um, and that's all I can say. Chikrin is well-rounded. He scores a lot. He contributes five on five. Their power play needs to be better due to the Coyotes forward personnel, not due to Chikrin at all. Um, he's good defensively. He plays top competition. Uh, the Cowboys had a bad year, so you could see why some of these, you know, the possession number is low. He's getting scored on more than he's scoring when he's on the ice. That's more of a team stat, but in some of these other stats, he's right there with these nominees. And I genuinely feel that he should have been a nominee. So let me know what you guys think. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and thank you for your support.